Welcome back to another Linux Game Cast Weekly, the show that covers the latest Linux gaming news, reviews, how tos, and most importantly, whatever the hell else we come up with. This week we're going to be talking about Tripwire because they have come clean about Killing Floor 2 and that supposed Linux port, but spoilers, kids, it's not good news. And multiplayer N64 has come to Linux, but we're never going to stream it because uh, Nintendo claims. We take a deep dive into everyone's favorite new mystery topic, Chinese PUBG players, and Godot wants more men, giggity. Hopefully they won't be waiting too long. I have more visual novels to play than ever before. Hashtag embarrassment of riches. And NVIDIA shows us what a real gaming TV should be. And I'm finally going to join Ven in the corner, rocking gently, thinking about the price tag. Mm -mm -mm. I'm Ben Stone here at LGC Actual, switching the bits, doing this nightmare fuel all under Linux, always. Joined every week by our Toronto correspondent, uh, the bureau chief in Snowland, Santa Claus himself, that is one master Sphang, and all the way from Ohio, oh. Texas, um, via Australia. That is Atomic. You know him. You love him. Because together with Shat Realm Dynamic joining us, helping us form that last, most special bed known as Cocaine Voltron. Before we get started, we do like to see what's going on in each other's life. Atomic, you're, you're filling in for um, Herr Mateus, so you go first, man. What's up, baby? Uh, I just put liquid metal in my laptop, so if I go blink during the show, you'll know why. Wait, what if that motherfucker's like, where's John Connor? Yes. Yes. All right. Yes. <laughs> okay. <laughs> What's up, J Baby? Oh, oh, not much. I've been I've been sinking a lot of time into Disgaea Five now because I can just play that on the toilet, and then my legs go numb, and then I try to stand up, but then I fall back down on the toilet because my legs are numb. <laughs> uh, beyond that, my vacation's over. Got to go back to work. Not looking forward to that. No, Sounds sir. What, 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 what about you? I hear you tried to compile a 415 kernel and some NVIDIA. Yes. Uh, when I'm not busy holding a heat gun to lithium ion batteries, I also like to do less dangerous things. Um, yeah, did the 415 with the 390 beta drivers on NVIDIA. I wanted to give that a spin. Kick the tire organs. Don't do that, kids. That driver is beta for a reason. It's got issues. But it does compile against uh, the 415 kernel, which is good. There's progress. And, uh, yeah, if you're brave, try it. Send us some feedback with your experiences because mine wasn't pleasant. Did not like the multi-monitor setup with the dual GPUs. And uh, it's not whitelisted with Chrome. So if you have GL acceleration on, you got to add an additional flag for parallax something. But uh, I've, I've I've run I've ran into some issues with the NVIDIA drivers where like sometimes they'll um they'll just lose like the EDIDs of the monitors mm -hmm. like Aaron showed me this trick years ago where you just have to like force it in the xorg.conf I, I don't I don't know that may not be what your issue is no the only thing I could make it sort it would figure out uh, the one I have in portrait it was monitor X screen number two which is third monitor. It wouldn't detect it unless I rotated it and rotated it back. So he's like, you know what? I, I just tapped out, went back to 387, called it a day. But um, we need to rotate the horse because we need to get into it. Yeah, the, the, we, we, we got we to gotta dig a hole all the way to China to you know shove the horse down there so that it can report on this latest story. It's the Steam Linux. <laughs> Update. Update. <laughs> oh, oh, I, I gotta say, I think that's your second or third time. You're getting a little bit better every time. Just a little yep. bit better. Coming up first, a little bit. Yeah. Uh, so, uh, PUBG. You know, every, everyone's favorite freaking hot take uh, is so. This this is from SteamDB. Uh, they want to know. Well, you know, there are so many PUBG players these days. How come there's no like same number of CS:GO or Dota players? Um. They uh, they they say we can't use Steam Spy because it's not a uh, reliable uh, data source. But uh, they they do a bit of a dig. Apparently, uh, CS:GO and Dota 2 have standalone launchers in China, which I didn't which I I didn't realize at the time. It's basically just a GIMP Steam launcher, and if you launch them with the perfect world flag, you just get a regular Steam ass Steam ass login show title. There you mm -hmm. go. Um, and so the, the the question then becomes like. Uh, well, these guys can access Steam. They can access games. Why aren't they playing more uh, Dota 2 and uh, Counter-Strike Global Offensive? And the 
answer seems to be because they don't want to. They, they, they go through all this data analysis to show that, like, the players are there. They, we get the China IPs. Uh, there, there are enough people using simplified Chinese as their language. But apparently, they're just, they're just all about that PUBG life. Hmm. Yeah, I didn't even know this was a non-troversy. A non-troversy? I don't know, man. It's uh, interesting to see, but I think the only thing that we've really been able to drag out of this is the addition of China is just fuck the numbers, period. So, Well, they have like a third of the world population. Right, so. I'm not saying it's a bad thing. It's just we have to recalibrate for that business. Mm-hmm. Um, do, you, do you think it had anything to do with the 7,600... In 72 games that were released in 2017? Maybe. Probably not. Yeah. Because we're all uh, playing PUBG. There yeah. were so many visual novels released last year. I, I can't even I can't even choose between them. It's your story, man. Are you are you a little chafed at the moment? Just a little bit, uh, you know. So uh, in 2016, there was 4,207 games released on Steam, which made up 30, 38% of the, uh, of the total on Steam at the time. And this year, it's gone even further than that, 7,672 games. This is That's also trouble. true, man. Well, it's I a mean, thing. It's reality. But, you know... It, you got to think about it, uh, Jordan. It's, I, I look every morning. Part of uh, my little horseshit routine is I go to the Steam store, do the three clicks, sort by new releases, and 99% of it's just straight up bullshit shovelware. And we're on Linux, so we're, we're only getting a little taste of that bullshit shovelware. I couldn't imagine a Windows user has to be just sorting through that, man. Yeah, I, I mean, like that, the, and that's the thing. They they got rid of Steam uh, Greenlight, so if, if you got if you got a hundred bucks, anyone can submit a game, which means lots and lots and lots of entries. And we're we're gonna talk about that a little more in the near the tail end of the Steam segment because there are some there there's some jank that got released this week. But uh, I, I get the the main issue here is now with all these games. It's, uh, now it's about getting them into the hands of people who will actually play them, and we got to we got to see how Valve's effort to curate all this automatically will go. But I, I got a I got a fiver on Skynet. Well, there's Skynet, but you also got to think that I mean, there's already been reports, you know, after the Steam's new system, you know, getting rid of Greenlight, where there was just the slimmest chance to stop a game from getting on. Now, as Jordan just said, you, you just make it rain. Steam, Steam will hook you up, but there have been reports on it. It's just increased. It didn't stop anything. It made it worse. And Steam, Steam, you're just laughing all the way to the bank, aren't you? That that that's kind of where I'm at. Yeah, they are. Yeah, well, it's it's it's, it's probably because they need to figure out a way to buy Vibes or HTC's failing VR division. Um, speaking speaking of which, oh my God, it's the Vive Pro. It's the new VR hotness. It has it has a couple enhancements over the original Vive headset. It's using the new base stations. We had been talking about those A6 uh, in the previous year. Um, they have uh, the set has a pair of built-in headphones. Uh, there's there seems to be a bit more of an AR focus on the headset now because mm-hmm. they added an additional front-facing camera. Um, and wireless man, um, that, that is not a sex. Yeah, toy. yeah, the, the wireless HDMI kit. That I, I, I was getting to that. Okay, uh, that that is that still going to be a real a boy. So then? now you can now you can pretend to be a Jedi and not fall on cables and look like an idiot. You just look like an idiot with while standing upright. Um, the the one thing they didn't mention in this article, and it, it no no word on price. This is all coming tw- like Q three twenty eighteen, if that, because we we know how hardware gets pushed back every now and again. Uh, but I wonder if they're going to have the new controllers uh, that uh, they had. They were demoing a while ago, the ones that like clip on your hands. The Knuckles controllers will not be part of this. Mm. Oh, they that's a bit that, unfortunate because yeah. the. I, I mean, I've I've used the Vive. the The controllers are kind of like an unwieldy part, just because it feels like I'm just waving a bunch of dildos around. But we're so accustomed to doing that. I mean, it's like I mean, Zen this is true, mastery. but. But it's it's called compartmentalization, Ben. I don't want to wave dildos around 
just how how you do normally, and then go home and try to play some VR, and then have to wave more dildos. Like, why would I do something in VR when I can just whip these bad boys out? Um, the scuttlebutt for the price is like for the headset by itself, basically, is going to be seven ninety nine. Uh, I got to say, you know, if you you didn't want to get face fucked by a toaster, getting face fucked by a blue Smurf might be your bag, baby. Um, but which Smurf? Yes, is the answer. I do think, though, like, I mean, it's going to drop the price of the original Vive. It, it kind of has to, right? And maybe more than six they, people. They, 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 got a, they got a severely undercut Oculus, though, because now, now they're, they're uh, selling those for like 350 Canadian. So it's hmm. probably like 150, 200 US, no? Yeah, somewhere in there. Are, are you excited about uh, getting uh, the Smurfy treatment? I don't know. Um, uh, maybe, but it's going to have to go on sale first because I'm, I'm not paying a hundred dollars for it. I do like the idea or just the, bit. it's not going to ship with it. It's going to be an attachment, but, but going wireless because that will greatly, greatly enhance the probability of people mangling themselves with much more ease as opposed to being tethered. You'd so. Be su- You'd be surprised that tether doesn't help you as much as you think. Plus, like once you once you get on a tearaway, you're taking your computer with you. That, so, that, that, that's what I'm saying. Man. You are. It, it, uh, we're going to be getting better um, YouTube videos and gifts and all that fun stuff. So maybe, maybe you could take it out on a bike ride. Who knows? Hey, man, maybe take it out on tripwire because guess what? Motherfuckers, they broke radio silence. Yes. Killing floor two. Uh, Yoshiro, developer for tri- tripwire. Kind of came out and he's like, yo, man, uh, the Linux client indefinitely on hold. Boo. The major bottleneck was uh, we didn't uh, develop it alongside. We decided to use DirectX and uh, we couldn't find anybody that would do it for free. And we don't really want to pay anybody the iron price to get it done correctly. I'm just paraphrasing what he's trying to communicate there. Uh, I do got to say this, though going to give him just the slightest bit of credit tripwire i am just, just a teeny bit because you broke radio silence and holy sweet mother of fucking all is that a good thing i mean developers need to learn just basic communication i don't care that it's not coming out but i i like to know isn't that right carmageddon yeah uh I wanted to play this game pretty badly because I, I liked Killing Floor 1. Why the hell didn't you build it with Vulcan? DirectX is dead. Okay, now this brings up an out. interesting question. Because if they do Vulcan, they have fuck all excuse. And you would imagine if they ever wanted to put Killing Floor 2 on the PlayStation. It's going to need OpenGL. Switch. Or Vulcan. Yeah, maybe. And... Uh, I, don't, I don't know, man. I mean, the game didn't get a lot of love when it was in permanent early access for as long as it was. And they tried to add, you know, some weird ass DLC stuff. I didn't follow it that closely because I didn't have big hopes on getting Killing Floor 2. But yeah, you're wondering about Vulcan Atomic. I'm going to say uh, Vulcan doesn't want to be anywhere near the um, Unreal Engine 3 rendering pipeline. That those are bad <laughs> no, no, see, man, what, what you need to do is you need to get that one library that re-implements DirectX 9 and Vulkan so that you can just use Vulkan. Oh, no. I mean, th- this, this, is, this is the big surprise, surprise. Woo, who, who would have saw it coming that if you develop your game in DirectX, you can't really port it to anything other than DirectX supporting platforms. And you, you brought up an interesting point with the uh, with like the PlayStation 4 or whatever. Killing Floor doesn't seem like a console-oriented game. They don't, to me, it was always like just like a PC shooter experience. So I don't, I don't think they're going to go that is. route. But yeah, but I mean, they were. I mean, you got to imagine, and they really thought that the Windows Mobile was going to push them over the top, right? Because that's the only logical reason, other than let's just lock it into Windows and one console. I mean, wait, the good console? No, the the, the like second place by a long shot console. Brilliant move, guys. Yeah. Brilliant move. Um, Vulcan Love. Feral showing us a yes, little bit of that. Vorhammer, $40,000 worth. Three 
Just a quick little fix. They brought it up to date. It's good. And they fixed the flashing textures with Vulkan render path on the 384, the stable NVIDIA drivers. I just want to say good on them for doing that. Uh, couldn't really get into the Warhammer. I tried, man. Have you played it a little bit more than me? I think so. How about you, Atomic? I've never played Warhammer. Mm. And I really haven't played that- much with Vulcan. Well, that, that, that was the thing. Like, Dawn of War 3 was a poor man's StarCraft when StarCraft actually exists and runs in wine reasonably well. So, I mean, that, that that's, that's the thing. They, they had a good thing going with uh, Dawn of War 2 where it was, like, more squad-focused. But then everyone threw a hissy fit, and then they released a subpar game. But at least it has Vulcan support. Well, you get, you got to admit, though, the Vulcan render, is pl- it's playable, unlike, um, oh, I don't know, XCOM 2. Gonna give it to you. Uh, X, XCOM Two is relatively playable. Okay, let, let me rephrase real. that. Uh, the performance of XCOM Two is dog shit compared to what it actually graphically delivers. Yeah, yeah, that, that's that's kind of like par for the course with Feral, though. Is they, they they get the base functionality down, but it's never never the best best performing stuff. Well, I mean, you're going to pay uh, the feral the, tax. The, the, I mean, you got Mad Max. I think Vulcan really helped shave that down, though. So, yeah. yeah actually, have, have you tried the, the the Vulcan renderer for Mad Max lately? Is it has it gotten any better? Well, I've played it at 1080p. It's basically over a hundred period on a 980. So, yeah, I, I remember people were complaining about the uh, the stuttering. I'm not sure if that got addressed. Or They've not. smoothed most of it out. I, I mean, I, I Skyrim Mad Max. I got to the last guy. And I was like, oh, I don't want to put a bow in it. So maybe I'll come back to it. I really enjoyed it. But on the Vulcan train, woo, woo, man. Um, Talos Principle. It's out. New update. It rolls off the tongue. 326, 589, and it's live. Uh, still waiting on that fusion update because you're going to bring Talos into the fusion pack, uh, Brad. Come on, do that for me. That'd be nice. Didn't notice uh, any real, oh, better detection, usable CPU cores, something about DX, don't care, rendering issues on OpenGL. Uh, performance improvements for Vulkan, which kind of threw me a bit sideways. Is how do you make this thing run better? Because let's face it, it, it Talos is the Vulkan benchmark. If you're going to be uh, testing Vulkan under Linux, that's a good way to do well, it. I didn't notice any performance increase. I mean, I ran it against my previous bench, and it was about the same. Yeah, well, the, the the one thing you should care about with that DirectX is that they're removing it. It's gone. Bye bye, DirectX or whatever. It's hmm. it's out of uh, it's out of Talos. So now it is full open GL Vulcan, and that that's pretty cool. Good on Crow Team for uh, for making that leap. I think more games need to do that. Because Vulcan is great. Use it. It's the future, bro. DX12. It's the future. Quit, quit lying to yourself. You just, All right. Well, it's, it's time to talk, talk about Urtzaz. I was trying to think of like a good Urtzaz pun, but <laughs> no, not happening. So this, this is a platformer uh, that is available. Uh, it's out now. Version 128 got released on January the 9th. That was what? Tuesday. All right. So uh, they have uh, Linux support. Uh, it's a game maker studio game though. So, and it's, it's all, it also like straight up has a seizure warning on the, on the store page. So it's extra seizure tastic. It's pretty great. Just make sure to like have a wallet in your mouth or something when you play it. Cause you don't want to accidentally get into a bit of a fit. Um, but it's, yeah, like I was saying, it's game maker studio. So there's gonna, there's gonna be some like hyper light drifter style input lag, which is kind of problematic for uh, precision platformers, which is, this kind of seems to be like. Mm-hmm. Also, I'm not sure if they're going to cap it at 30 FPS or not, because that is the thing you got to worry about in Game Maker Studio. Yeah, apparently that is. Uh, we we learned that with Hyperlight. It's going to have to redo the entire thing, and everyone's like, redo the entire thing. So uh, good on them. They set us two keys initially for the game. It does have a Linux version, even though they haven't updated their Steam store for it. They uh, sent us a third. We'll, we'll be taking a look at it. We, we got a couple things in the bin before we get to that one. <laughs> It looks, it reminds me kind of a, maybe an updated v- 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 for hipster. What do you think? Yeah, I love um, some maybe, maybe, maybe some like Ikaruga type stuff with like color matching. Um, yeah, I, 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 I don't know, but it, it makes with the wub wub. That, that seems to be their big selling point. Hmm. 
All right. Go for it, Atomic. You, you got to talk, man. We can't wait for you. Yeah. Uh, I don't know. I, I might like this game as long as it doesn't have a uh, 30 FPS lock. That, that'd that kind of kill it. You know what? They, they, they need to spite lock it at 24. That just piss everyone off. I mean, th- then I'll play it out of pure hate. There you go. You, you see, make it a sell and right stream there. Stream it. Twenty four. It's a thing. Aspire. They're still doing Linux stuff, man. And one of the th- things they did, Civilization. What is it? Five. Six. Six. Fall twenty seventeen update. It's live. So now, now you can play with the, the Windows counterparts. I believe again. Finally, after a long time. Uh, it's civilization. Speaking, speaking, speaking of like shitty performance, though. Can can someone in chat room confirm if like they've fixed the dog shit performance that Civ Six was having off after release? Because like you 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 want you want to talk about like bad performance under Linux, considering mm. it's like a two D two point five D strategy game, it just ran like complete and utter dog shit. I just got to be honest. Uh, this the Civ is one of the games that. I didn't even bug Aspire about. It's like, yeah, you guys keep that one. I, I don't want to play Civilization. This is not my thing, man. It, it like turn-based strategy is too slow for me. Civ probably still has a email mode in it, man. It it does straight up does. Hey, I'm surprised it doesn't like print postage. You know, just in case that email's too snappy for you. Yeah, no, you, Actually, you need to get the stamps print DLC print. for that. They could definitely be a thing. Uh, what's up next, the topic? Uh, next up is uh, Tooth and Tail. They have a uh, patch out, and now you can uh, cross-play with your friends on GOG. So I don't know if that actually works, but it'd be interesting if it does. No, man, that's pretty cool. They got a bunch of yeah. balance changes. Throw it in here, man. Uh, MMR, bug fixes pretty fun game it's really the only rts i've ever been able to play with the i played with steam controller quite enjoyable it's very simplified experience a lot of people have tried to complain about that it's like come on man you knew that when you were looking at it uh yeah for for everyone who bought their drm free version pirates uh <laughs> you, you guys are now connected i don't know that is that a good thing jordan is it a bad thing I mean, he, like here, here's the thing: you you gotta you gotta look at piracy at this point. As these people were never gonna buy your game to begin with, mm-hmm. uh, because they're filthy pirates. So, I've, if if you if you make it, or there, there 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 is the line of thinking that if you make it just accessible for everyone, if you pirate the game, you still get the full feature set. They may feel obligated at some point in the future to buy a copy of the game. I mean, I've done that. I've gone back and bought games that I've pirated in the past just because I have the money to do so now. Uh, and I feel that developers should be reimbursed for the enjoyment I derive from their product. Hmm. So you, 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 can, you can definitely make that argument. Like the, the people who are pirating would never have bought it in the first place. So at the very least, you're expanding your player base. And Someone, I mean, it, it's unlikely if they're pirating it, but someone might go to someone's house and play the game and be like, oh, cool, I'm going to go home and buy it. Realistically, they're just going to get a copy from whoever they played the pirated version this on. This is but, true, you know, but and I do think it's there. very... We need to clarify. We're not saying, oh, everyone who buys the GOG DRM, because I shit on GOG myself. We're not saying all of that piracy, but you know the ones we're talking about. They're like, I only played the DRM free for yeah, you, notice how you say you only play, and uh, you, you know the ones we're talking about. So, who wants to be stranded alone in uh, Unity Assets? Or? I, I, I don't uh, know, I'll but Tan, Tanny Tran apparently does. Uh, so, this it, it's a, it apparently looks like it's just like one of those infinite shooters where you just run around and kill stuff until you die. Um, it looks cringeworthy. Oh, oh man. Like when, when, when you get to the bottom of the about this game, oh, silly phrases and voice acting by the dev. That's no, <laughs> just pat, hard, hard pass on that. Well, I like the fact that he's holding a sword and he's shooting. Um, the, the entire description of this game is survive. 
Survive. Yeah. So, um, yeah. No, so, so re- you're supposed to survive, survive it's, it's playing like, the game. This game is, is that what it is? Uh-huh. Yeah. Okay. It, it's just an endless shooter. It, 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 and it's clear too that like whoever whoever wrote, whoever made this game is not like a native English speaker. You can tell just from the um, game description, or not the the about the game segment. But still, this avail, available January twenty eighteen. The clock is sticking down mm. on that. I I, I I don't know. Is, is anyone actually going to leg- legitimately buy this game? Oh no! And I'm not going to ask him for keys because we'll end up getting a gang of keys, and I'm never going to play it. So. That's the thing, man. Uh, what do we got up next here? Uh, oh, well, gr- speaking, of, uh, speaking of speaking uh, of non-English speakers, you could probably fit the uh, Chronicles of Cyberpunk into the same category. I was on board with this game because it actually looked kind of interesting until I saw the English in the trailer. Mm-hmm. Uh, it's a- English with air quotes. Uh, it's pretty fucking bad. I can't tell what the story is in the game. I don't know, man. This looks like that um, Grateful Dead video from it, way back then. Yeah, I'll, I'll take no, your word or on. Dire Straits, Money for Nothing. Yeah, I want my MTV. Could be. And uh, we listen, man. I, I gotta go install this microwave us oven. Do some <laughs> custom kitchen deliveries. No, it's it. It kind of it has like a really like. Reboot is generous because reboot looked better than this. I'm gonna say, um, yeah, it did. But yeah, yeah, it's. I mean, it's it's a it's a cyberpunk adventure game. Uh, I I, I don't I don't know. It, it's definitely trying to go for a style. I'm not sure if it's gonna resonate with people. Uh, does that? No, no wacky system requirements. That, no. That's usually what I go for for funny for funny jokes. Chronicles of Cyberpunk, and they also need to enable their um. Repo for Steam, but it is available. It shows up, at least according to Steam. Um, everyone's favorite genre that never gets old uh, is first-person shooters. World War II shooters? Yeah, man. I mean, it's the new sauce, and we're totally not burnt out on them. People are looking forward. They don't want new. They don't want innovation. No, no. They, they, they want to bring it back to when the shooters were absolute shit. And um, through, through the lens of nostalgia glasses uh some people are hell-bent on recreating that yeah and what, what's what's also interesting is this is this is being published by a uh, squeenix so it, it is another squeenix game on the linuxes which is kind of nice it's just we have even, even before we had steam on linux we had too many first person shooters on mm-hmm. linux that was that was kind of the problem and adding more, I mean, if you're really into shooters, that's great, but this, this doesn't seem to be doing much or anything new that, like, your open arenas. No, or man, I'm going to be honest with you. I mean, lo- looking at the video, this is, like, at best, if I'm being polite, enemy territory, Wolfenstein, with, like, community-made yeah. uh, graphic enhancements. Mm-hmm. If I'm being nice. Yeah, it's Squeedix, so we're going to get it on Linux. And it's going to be early access, uh, first of February, and uh, hmm, can't can it requires uh, apparently all bit. you need to run it is a sixty-four bit processor and an operating system, just any operating system. Anyone you want, man, doesn't matter. Uh, I don't know, man. Kind of going back to what you said there was no joke, kids. Basically, through the entirety of two thousands. All we had was were shooters. We had Quake clones. We had Prey, which was good. And for a hot second, we had Loki titles like Myth 2, Soul Blotter, and Heavy Metal, and Quake 3, which was a shooter, or um, Heavy Gear 2, which was kind of a shooter. But, yeah, I, uh, I'm shot the hell out. And I don't want to put this. I mean, I'm just getting tired the of heart. the new genre. We, we see, like, Insurgency... And a um, couple other games like Ballistic Overkill. Like we're bringing back old school multiplayer, and it's, it's a stick. It's like stop. Let, let's get something innovative. Let's get more giant purple no, no. floppy dildos in our first person shooters, that, man. That's what I want to see: old school multiplayer where they throttle you to dial up speeds. Oh yeah, I, I want minimum eight hundred pings, and you think that's good? I yeah. want bullet holes <laughs> to appear on walls. 
five seconds after you shut. <laughs> See, I just gave somebody a free game yeah. idea because that, that that's a viable thing. That's oh, like absolutely. A, it's, yeah. it's retro. It's retro. <laughs> it's like us. Oh, shit. I apologize. Our, 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 LGC our, our, cares. What do you mean the net yeah. code needs improvement? That, that's, that's the way we designed it. Right. Listen, listen we, we, we have to set up a custom IPX over IP tunnel because we didn't update our net code. All right. Com- coming up next, uh, we talk about big fucking screens. They're, they're just so big and they're so expensive. Not unlike your or, I guess the opposite of your mom. He tried. 50% like your mom? Yeah, you, I don't know. You still get a gold know. star. On the topic of bad financial decisions, uh, you should totally head on over to uh, linuxgamecast.com and click the support button because this show would not be possible without the lovely, lovely support of people like you. We're just like PBS, except PBS puts out quality content and we do the opposite of that. Uh, we, we got all sorts of uh, links that you can click and just insert your credit card information into for, say, Amazon for affiliate links, Newegg for affiliate links, Humble affiliate links. We got affiliate links for days. <laughs> uh, we got an Amazon wish list. Uh, it's, it's dwindling. We're we're down to like five or six items on that list. Soon it will be empty. Woo-hoo. And somehow, somehow we'll need to figure out shit that people can buy us. Probably just... Well, listen, I mean, you don't want to give it away because, like, then when the actual 50-gallon drum of lube shows, I'll be like, all right, they're they're out of shit. Uh, yeah. But, but uh, and but of course, uh, speaking speaking of uh, supporting this, uh, you can always head on over to patreon.com slash Linux Gamecast to give us money week in and week out. Uh, we are currently at, and I pulled this up, but then I flipped away from that tap. God damn it, Jordan. 109 Patreons giving us 209 bucks per week per episode. We don't get paid unless you get something. So you can always make, you can always feel good about that. We got all sorts of other bonus content funded by this Patreon, including three additional weekly streams, including one additional podcast, Weekly Daily Wednesday. I was on that this week, and uh, Jill Linux Girl in chat room was also there. Uh, we talked about some stuff. Uh, and of course, we get meet the Freemans every Tuesday until they defeat that. The, if, listen, if you throw enough Freemans at a problem, it'll it'll go away eventually. And Thursdays is just whatever the hell I feel like playing at the time. Uh, yeah, it's good stuff. Uh, all sorts of cool stuff. You can get access to Discord, uh, show note access. You can even uh, put stuff in the show notes if you want. If you want to suggest stories, you get your name and fancy Star Wars credits. You get uncut VOD access three days early to for players games games that we cast on the linux <laughs> uh if you want if you want to play with us you can hop on the streams because you bought you paid us you can you can show up and if you, you can be like the atomic ass and be like hey man i want to be on the show here's a bunch of money he still owes me three thousand dollars though yeah i know money, man uh, that's coming out of the patreon fucking piece, of, fucking piece of shit i'm gonna break your legs but you know whose legs i'm not gonna break our um our lovely lovely new patreons mike w we gotta give a big old welcome back to mr matt c and christopher c as well uh given us some money enabling us to do this weekend and we got we love you thank you so much for your ongoing support we, that, that, we that was the nicest you've ever been it, it, I'm, I'm a little bit scared of what you actually did with jordan hey atomic I, w- I want to scream at you just for a hot second because he is an executive producer he backs us at that level which basically means you need to be real damn careful because you're probably going to end up on the show when we're down a co-host as uh when the T hand and mr fox dog has learned recently it's been brilliant it's been real but yeah come hang out with us in discord man it's kind of brilliant you can end up on frank's wall unfortunately frank's not here tonight frank took off wednesday what? because yeah well he took off so he could be on the show wednesday and he's like fuck that noise man He's got to do some stuff on a Saturday night, but you can end up on his fine young cannibal wall. Stay tuned for the credits and you will see what's yeah. going on there. So let's spend that $3,000, Atomic OG Man. Ooh, yeah. I love this. So NVIDIA has just announced their uh, BFGD, Big Format Gaming Displays. Um, to be in this, it's got to have NVIDIA G Sync, it's got to be 4K. It's got to have 120 hertz HDR. And the one that they're showing off at CES right now is 65 inch, has a built in NVIDIA shield. And just just take my money already. I want three of them in my house now. 
Well, I, I mean, you're, you're, you're going to be hard pressed and be, let's, let's be real. BFGD, it stands for big fucking goddamn. <laughs> uh, cause that, that, that's how much money you're going to be paying also, yes. for these things. Yeah. If, if, if you listen, listen, if, if you're expecting this to come in anything resembling affordable, you're smoking some good Kush, man. I want some. Can I buy some off I, you? I, I fully expect to have to remortgage my house. To pay for these, I mean, especially after giving uh, me, like no Jordan three thousand dollars, dude. I, what the hell are you thinking? Yeah, um, yeah I, I agree with the Atomic uh, BFGD. Good name, Acer, Asus, HP. They're going to be rolling out these critters, uh, which I know they'll never be able to do. But if they could get like, give me like a fifty-three. Uh, fuck it, give me a forty-eight inch for under seven hundred watt stinky caches. Not and, happening. Dude, I'll make it rain, man. I'll make it rain. No. Oh man, no! They're they're charging that G Sync premium. Like, oh hey, you 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 want our little our asynchronous refresh rate? Yeah, no, here's, here's an extra three hundred dollars on your asking price for no reason. Well, I mean, they, they unfortunately kind of can because AMD is genuinely giving away free sync, and people are like, y- y'all get any more of that G Sync? Yeah, hell, I I own a free sync monitor that I can't use because it's not supported on Mac. It's not even supported on Linux. <laughs> Good times. Um, hey, man, guess who's back? Oh, DeJuro's back. back. Are they really, though? Kind of. I don't know. They're, they're online. Uh, and apparently, you can download and purchasing works in theory. I don't know. I haven't been to the site yet to check. But... Uh, that's what Reddit says. Yeah. For those of you who don't remember or just not stalwart enough to endure last year's wonderful, wonderful early 2017 Linux Game Cast, um, Bad Juju was a company that had picked up uh, Desura after uh, the previous owners, I think it was the Second Life people, just could not do it anymore. Um, and so... There was a bit of a snafu involving Bad Juju, you know, not paying the developers whose games they were hosting and selling and then kind of going radio silence and declaring bankruptcy. So, I mean, Desura, Desura has some toxicity associated with it, definitely. And I'm curious, like, did the devs bad, did these guys just go to the devs Bad Juju screwed over? It's like, yeah, sorry, bro, we, we don't have your money. Hey, you want, you want to sell your games on our platform, though? We won't fuck you over this time. You know, I, I'm willing to bet that whoever currently owns Desura, that, that was part of the acquisition of making sure none of that fuckery comes back and haunt, haunts him. Because, yeah, for several weeks when that business went down, it, it was weekly grab some popcorn. And, I mean, bad juju fucks people. Even their PR person was fighting to him to the very end. They're like, no, this is all lies. and Don't, no, don't listen. And then uh they they told her they're like yeah you don't have a job anymore and she's like fuck these motherfuckers they're screwing people over and like a perfectly valid response yeah it does have a little bit of stink to it i could get to the desura web zone couldn't remember my login don't really care yeah there are a couple of games like caster and um a, a game of, where you play a pickle i'm not kidding i think um that only those were the only linux ports ever available. So, I mean, if you can sort that business, download what you can download, but don't buy anything until it, just everything's clarified yeah. because we don't know. I, 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 I got lucky because I, they, they late, late before they sold it to the second life folks. So it's like, Hey, you can like extract keys from Desura and redeem them on steam. So I did that for all the games I had on Desura hmm. that you could do it with. And well, you know, the, kind of the thing is, is there are a couple of games on Desura that the only Linux ports for those games exist on Desura. They don't, they're not on God. That's, they're not on steam. This, this, this is fair. Yeah. I think, I think that zombie golf game was one of those. Yeah. Mm, no, I think that one's on Gog. Isn't there? I, I, I think so, but that's not the only store. I'll, I'll take your word on that. Not the only store we're talking about this week because, uh, Critivo. It's up. Critio. Critivo. Yeah, no, they, um, they have a game. It's not a game uh, that I, I, had, I had heard of from a completely unrelated Kickstarter. They have a thing called Goblins of Elderstone. It's like a dwarf fortress, but with goblins. Um, and the only reason I've, I've, I fucking know about this is because the, there was a webcomic that was doing a Kickstarter for an animated pilot. Uh, but this is crap. 
I mean, what they, they, they sell a couple of the games that they made, uh, Universe Sim, C4, Carried Away, Prehistoric Kingdom. Uh, th- I don't know. This kind of looks like the um, sort of like the humble, not the humble, the uh, feral storefront or the Aspire storefront from back in the day. Well, no launch DLC, no DRM, and uh, what else? Uh, no pay to win. They proudly say that. Welcome to the Curtivo store. A new age of play. TM starts here. And, uh, ooh, Atomic, I, I kind of feel that it, it might be just a little too late to get into the game at this point. Just just, just a little bit. Uh, is this a MMO? I, it's not... No, it's like, it's like a game store slash... Yeah, both of you were talking have, about games currency. and the story is about them launching their own game store. I don't know where the hell you two are at. I see. I, I, have, see, I, I, I read through There's nothing that. here to indicate I, that they're I, I opening I just saw the store. thing about uh, the Goblins game. They, listen... It, uh, apparently they have itchy and scratchy books, though. That's a thing. Yeah. Cry coins. You, you guys are uh, smoking crazy sauce because it says "Welcome to the Cretivo Store" and it has a big banner here that is explaining everything about their store. That's yeah, up on I the screen no right I now. See blackness. So yeah, that 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 that, that was that was in the, in, the, in the show note links, but what what whatever. Okay, then how the hell did uh, I open so- it, genius? Magic, magic. I, I just went off the show notes. You guys seems, 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 seems legit. I, I, I think we need to take you to Hogwarts. Ah oh, man. So yeah. so the, the, so it's it's just basically just a, a storefront, right? You, yeah, they're they're opening a storefront. That and it hooks into like Humble and Gog and all nope. these guys, or uh-uh. nope, nope. It's it's it's, it's just the store. Just stores. It's just, they're they're doing their own store, man. Yeah, well, I, I mean, that well, they, they might as well just done. start developing a new mobile operating system that will take the world by storm because now, now is the time for all these things. I don't know, man. I don't know. Uh, what do we get up next? Boa. Uh, next, we've got Blades of Agony. Uh, do you want to see Hitler I, dead? Yeah, sure. Discuss, download, commit. What is it you never heard of it? Think about it, man. It's basically OG Wolfenstein with a story. What does this incorporate? Some high resolution sprites, 11 new maps, GZ, Doom's latest new engine features. And it's all available for the low, low price of free. Chapter 2 Shadows of the Wreck has been released. Go put that in your face, Oregon. You might like it. I don't know, man. I, I, I'm Wolfenstein the hell out, but. Yeah, it could be something to play around with if you've never experienced that hipster pixel goodness. And who doesn't want to kill Hitler, really? And and uh, what do you call I've it, Mr. Mr. Poopy, hip- uh, Alan Pope from the Ubuntu podcast? Um, he he uh, he's a Patreon, so he gets to add little comments to our show notes. Mm-hmm. And apparently, they have it in uh, Snap, in the Snap repos. Yeah, I noticed an issue with Snap, which oh, I wrote Snap. him back in the show notes. It's like, yeah, this thing creates like three virtual loopback devices. It's like, yeah, that's a known bug. And, and I was like, that should not be on anybody's system then if that's a known bug. I'm sorry. Well, his his his, his follow-up to that is kind of questionable too. It's like, we, 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 we put in a pull request to just hide the things that we're spawning. That doesn't seem like a proper solution to that problem. Why should a package manager have a loopback device associated with it, period, ever? Are we because talking wizards. about a pulse loopback or a file system loopback? File system. Uh, because I think that's the way the snaps work. All right, because they create loopbacks. Another reason not to use it. Yeah, Thank they're you. Like, they're like the Mac DMGs or whatever. <laughs> I don't. I don't know. It, it, it's available if you're using a snap supported operating system like Solus or Ubuntu. Then you can just get this out of the box. Loopback devices be damned. All right. Uh, um. Hot fire. Hot magma. Uh, speak- yeah, speaking speaking of this, uh, we, we were talking a little bit about uh, Loki games and uh, sort of Myth 2. And this, so uh, this is kind of a big old fuck you to that. Not really. This is just an open source re-implementation of the Myth 2 engine. Uh, they have a new version, 1.8.2. Uh, they have, it's available to download. There's a big old list of, they, they, they included their change set in a PDF, which to me doesn't seem like the smartest thing to do. Um, 
but uh, they they have uh, drop in multiplayer games now. Um, non hosts will no longer send playerless packets to the meta server. They have some synchronization bugs that are being fixed. Some incorrect colors. Just uh, it seems like it's just a maintenance release. Mm-hmm. Um, some issues on Max. There's no there's no Linux specific fixes. Um, yeah, but it's available. It's an engine reimplementation of Myth Two Soul Blader. Go go play it. If you you, you might dig it, man. No. Um, would this require uh yes. the original CDs? It does. Okay. Yeah. No, I have no idea. Um it was the first Loki title I purchased over the internet with a box copy way back when. Never really liked the game, played the shit out of it because well, I bought it and it was a Linux game and it came in a Linux box that I went down to the Linux store and ordered. And I do remember getting all excited when the GL patch uh, finally came out for it and I think by that time we had Quick 3. So that's the thing. Uh, go relive that nightmare fuel. But, uh, hey, man, maybe you look at this uh, dog and pony show and you're like, screw this horse shit. I want to support somebody else. Uh, don't do it. Give us all your money. But you can also help out another project that we like to give a mention is Godot. Yeah, uh, there's a couple projects. Uh, Ethan, Ryan C. Gordon, Godot is another one that we recommend people support on Patreon because... Honestly, the thing is, we need more high-quality open-source development tools if we're going to ever try and bring game developers to Linux as a platform. we got to prove to them, hey, it's really easy to program on Linux. Like, really easy. Like, more easy than uh, doing it all in Visual Studio. But that does it for you, so who cares? Uh, this is, they, uh, they have a new Patreon goal. If they can make it to 7500 bucks, uh, they're going to be hiring uh, Remy Verschled. I'm, I'm, I'm butchering his name. I don't care. Or Iken or Akian, as they call him. Uh, he's a sort of a merge master. Um, he uh, has, has essentially been involved in over 3,000 uh, pull requests in three years for the Godot project. So um, they want to bring him on board so that they can have some better organization in the project, which I feel is, is, is a step that a lot of devs don't actually take, like actually hiring a manager to help manage things. A lot, of, a lot of developers are like, oh, I'll do it on my own time. I'll do it by myself. But uh, then yeah, you, you got to have somebody in charge or it leads to like bullshit infighting, man. I mean, egos. You, you yep. need somebody that can walk in, check all the fucking egos and uh, have that authority respected. So good on them for doing that. That's a good step for the project. Up next, we got a little bit of a hybrid, man. It's a little bit platformer, a little bit RPG. Arthur and uh, one of our uh, executive producers mm-hmm. sent this business in. Uh, it's not Cedric. It's Cendric, a uh, 2D Cendric. RPG platform indie game that which players explore by compete, completing levels and oh shit, man, throwing you for a twist in this uh, thing. So, some yeah, some cut, cutting edge RPG mechanics right here. I so uh, I, I tried giving it a build because I only have uh, pre built uh, binaries for Ubuntu. I ran into a compilation issue um, insofar as apparently it's looking for some Steam library or Steam header file that doesn't get shipped with it. Hmm. Well, I know it is available on Steam, but it's also in the GitHub. I, I don't know. I looked at it, didn't get a chance. I've kind of been slammed this week to give it a play, but I mean, it's been updated recently as nine hours ago. So yeah. it's definitely a thing. Do you have anything to say on this, Atomic? I looked at the video of this on uh, Steam, uh, and the animation rigging is just rough. This is uh, is definitely programmer art. Yeah, no, you you can get a like sprite boundary or something, but I mean, I mean, that's that's the thing. We developers can't be expected to be entire jack of all trades. The myth of the full stack developer is just that a myth. Um, and a good developer so, will I mean, freely they, admit they to doing programmer get around that, so, especially yeah, for an open source project. That's a thing at the end of the day. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Up next. So, uh, oh God, every, every, every time, every time I see this freaking website, it hurts my face. Oh God. It's just so painful. This is like some nineties, some nineties web design or early two thousands web design. Hey man, it has the it Linux universal app. Lead. I don't know what that is, but it has it. Um, I th- oh, no, cuz this this is all done in unity so it's just a zip file containing the x86 binary. Hmm. Uh, but they it have a, a beta available. Uh, apparently this guy just returned from the hospital, released an update. Um 
Yeah, I can't look at this website for too long just because it like legitimately makes my head hurt. So, so on a scale of um, what the hell is this game about for the audio listeners? Um, it's like um, man, I don't even know what it is. Uh, it's like a it's like a Eve Online type uh, strategy game. Mm-hmm. Uh, it's supposed to have like cross platform play across like uh, Windows, Android, um, and whatnot. Oh no! It's a sorry. It's a it's, yeah. It, it is a strategy game. Uh, takes place in space. That that that's about all I got. This is what happens when people go on vacation, ladies and gentlemen. No, I'm looking at it, man. I, 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 basically, it looks like a uh, yeah resource management star system something. I don't know. Again, I didn't get a chance to try it, but it is open. It is available. It is in beta. So go put that in your face, working. Give it a look. For Net64, sure. it's a thing. It's a client. It's in beta. This comes from uh, Black DE. It says, hey, man, I've been working on the Linux port for the Net64 client, and it's finally reached a stage where I can give other people access to it without feeling ashamed. M64 Play recommends uh, the emulator to run it with, and that's kind of cool. I mean, I thought it was a neat thing. Be able to do your uh, multiplayer N64 gaming and now it's on linux happy with that uh kind of unhappy that nintendo are a bunch of dicks about claiming copyright on anything they own which you know you stream a game copyright claim so we won't be streaming any of it but maybe some of that jank might exist and we'll just lock it off and put it somewhere i don't know man what are your thoughts hence Maybe. I mean, isn't this just for Super Mario 64, though? Oh, Not fuck no. All Nintendo. N64. Nintendo has its own program. Oh, for this game is on Mario 64? Yeah, for, for, for this thing, yeah. Yeah, it's uh, the multi-64. Yeah, I think, I, think it, I think it's just Mario 64. Yeah. Yeah. So so you can't you can't play, like, online Smash or whatever. But, you know, no. Super Mario 64 is a fun game. Mm-hmm. It's, quite, it's like... It was, the, 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 Nintendo did a good when they sort of nailed 3D platforming out of the gate. So... That was that was definitely a thing. Now you can play with friends um, until Nintendo takes it down and like sends ninjas to assassinate anyone who starts us up. This is true. Well, I don't have. Uh, any I don't friends, know, Atomic. You uh, have anything to say about it? Yeah. I don't have any friends that play uh, N sixty four now or ever. So uh, I probably won't get any use out of it. Well, yeah, you know, because well, you can't run an emulator. I understand because you got that yeah. janked ass Xeon. Yeah, em- emulation might I not be those... a thing. Maybe, maybe you want to do an entire engine reimplementation, and you want maybe some I... kind of list where you can find what what game, what uh, engine reimplementations exist for a given game, and more importantly, what state they're actually in. So this is op- osgameclones.com. It's just a list of what I just said. Um, they have an entire list of games. I, I went through this like before we started recording. It's like, oh, like there, there's a bunch of projects I completely forgot exist that are like playable. Um, the, a lot, a lot of these are sort of either unconfirmed or non-playable, halted. But if you want to pick them up or if you want to fuck around with them, the list exists, and I think that's definitely a good thing, just because there's a lot of old games that have these engine reimplementations that allows you to play them on like new shit. Yeah, I mean, you gotta. It's kind of hard to remember, but a lot of people, when you first head over to Linux, you you want to know what the equivalent of usually an application, but for a game. Mm-hmm. And uh, let's be honest, a lot of these are hobby projects, so set your expectations accordingly. For Atomics. sure, but they they got they got stuff like GemRB and Open Morrowind on the list too, which are like nice full featured apps that actually work. Mm-hmm. As well, so I don't know. They, what they, this they actually do. Is, but they to. actually do index them. Sorry, what? There, there's a game on here called Atomics. I don't know what it is, but I want to know what it is. All right. Stay tuned for the after show where Atomic just we stream him setting up Atomics. Yeah. Get us out of here. Yeah, coming up next, it's a jailbreak. We got We got to escape from prison because I accidentally dropped the soap and other cliches. Throwing chairs that escape us too. Next. Woo! I don't want to go to prison. They pee in a cup and throw it at you.
Instead, I can go play a video game about escape prison called The Escapist 2. It's from Team 17 Digital and Moldy Tooth. Okay, I almost mispronounced that. Studios. Mm-hmm. It's done on the Unity engine. You can pick it up for about 20 bucks. What is it? Craft, steal, brawl, escape. It's time to bust out of the toughest prisons in the world as you return to the life of an inmate in The Escapist 2, now with multiplayer. Uh, the devs did send us some keys, so thank you very much for that. We're going to give it the chair QA session. What is it? It's where we take a look at a game. We've got the three of us. We're very different people. We have different opinions on what we consider a good game. And yeah, we uh, talk about it. We do a little QA that maybe the devs should have done before releasing it. And then we give you a final score based on these chairs. One means that it's garbage. Two chairs means that it's meh. Three chairs means that it's pretty good. Four cheese, Four Four cheese, cheese. means that it's a marzing. Yeah, there you go. A marzing. Good word. And we also got our categories of doom, which we apply these to. Makes with working, shiny sounds, controls, and fun. So let's kick this off. I think we'll, we'll, we'll hand it off to the guest set first. Atomic Ass. Did the Escapist 2 make with the working? Yeah, it, uh, it worked. I uh, ran it on my box of Arch with the dual Xeons. And I also you know, it's ran bad it enough that my, you uh, run a goddamn Xeon for a desktop and you put arch on and you wonder why shit's wrong. I just, you just need to <laughs> tap out on that one, buddy. Uh, I also ran it on the Asus, uh, laptop. Uh, both of these had, uh, uh, Nvidia graphics. I also tried to run it on, uh, my, uh, Dell in 11. It wouldn't get into game on that one, but, uh, that's just cause it doesn't have enough memory, but it, it did give, uh, playable frame rates in the menu at least but i'm not going to get a uh, ding in a chair because they do say in the system requirements it requires four gigs of ram so i'm going to give it four chairs jordan oh, what, about, what about you then all right uh if you want to know how it runs on the ryzen 1700 powered by 980 displayed at uhd 3840 by 2160 it's not 4k um hey man Everything ran like it should. It maintains a solid 70 plus FURPS at that 3840 by 2160. But then again, look at it. It kind of should. There is a little bit of graphical herky jerk when you're moving in certain environments, but not enough to write home about. Maybe send a body part or two, an ear, maybe a nose, but don't put a letter in with it. Uh, yeah, no issues. This is on Ubuntu 1710 with four point whatever the hell kernels out this week low latency no issues everything works separate x screens i love it i'd give it four canadian yeah yes german um yeah no on uh, fedora 26 64 bit with the uh, gtx 980 and the i7 6700k no issues ran in excess of like a couple thousand frames a second at 4k as is to be expected no 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 issues four chairs so that's four chairs for the um, makes with working. How about shiny and sounds? I'll I'll take this one. Hmm. I mean, like the pixel art is decently done. It's not like they they went to like Sprite Forge or whatever and just ripped a bunch of assets. But I mean, it's it's nothing special. Like when when I think of like three or four chair sprite work, I think stuff like Alboy or um, I'm I'm space or like Super Brothers, Sword and Sorcery, or stuff like that. This this is just kind of middle of the road. Combined with combined with the fact that like the the soundtrack here isn't I don't know I didn't I didn't I wasn't really into it. Um, it's it basically exists so that it makes noises so that you know when you need to like go to the next place so that your suspicion doesn't get too high. Um, I mean it it looks fine for what it is, but it basically just gets the job done in my opinion. It doesn't really do anything to push the push the boundaries. That's the word I'm looking for. Cheese, Two cheesy boundaries. Over here, man, uh, check it out. I, I kind of thought a little bit differently about it with, uh, yeah, because, like, personally, I, I think this is some next level hipster pixel animation. I'm, just, I'm about to say this because I rather enjoyed looking at the damn thing. It is something in the way it moved, giggity. Does have, definitely have a strong, uh, this is what I, think I remember SNES games looking like because I've only played them in an emulator and didn't realize they didn't really look like this. But I'm going to make my game like this anyway. Kind of dig it. Kind of dig it. Uh, when it comes to audio, kind of with Jordan on that, I ended up slayering the audio after the initial tutorial when I realized there's not a lot there for me. But I'll throw it a solid three. Give it some love. 
Yeah, like Ven, I uh, I agree with the uh, the SNES influence. I, I think it's it's very nice. Um, personally, I like soundtracks that that are right in the middle. You, you don't you don't force me to mute it and and put the Slayer on, but I can forget about it when I when I quit the game, so I'm not buying the soundtrack separately. So for me, I give it four chairs. All right, well, that's three chairs for shiny and the sounds. How about the controls, Ven? Do you do you play this with the keyboard or the controller? Uh, yeah, man, I broke out this. The uh, Frenchie picked it up. I'm still using it. The Areola controller, the Steam controller, you know it. It's all spiteful and shit. Kind of impressed. Eh, nope, not kind of. Fucking impressed. That's what I am because, uh... Yeah, this thing passed with the uh, flaming hot Cheetos, like right out of the box, 100%. Everything's logically mapped, didn't have to fuck around with that. And it was a 100% sit back experience like a game like this should be. Uh, I was kind of worried that, oh shit, maybe I'm going to have to do a custom controller mapping with the Steam. Mm-mm, nothing like that, man. It just dug it and easy to play. Everything moved when I booped it up, down, left, right, menu item selection. Yeah, 100%. It works. Straight four, bitch. Yeah, um, yeah. Um, I had some issues because I have uh, this this boy here paired as a uh, Steam controller. This is a DualShock 4. Um, it, for whatever reason, did not seem to like whatever mapping I gave it because like, if you hit the triangle button, it would start the player 2, which was really dumb. Um, so I, I switched back to keyboard and mouse. Everything's like logically laid out. Uh, some of the stuff is a little weird because, like Ben said, it is meant to be played on a controller. So, like the the workout mini games or the reading mini games, all kind of depend or sort of expect you to have shoulder buttons, which you don't. But it, it it takes a little bit of getting used to, and the prompts, if you have a controller plugged in, don't show up as keyboard only. So, again, a little confusing. But once you get that all sorted, it works fine. I'll give I'll give it three cheers. What what what, what about you, Atomic? Yeah, I, I didn't even realize this had controller support at first. Uh, so I just went keyboard and mouse. And I, I found it was uh, logically laid out. Um, now that I know it has controller support, I might go back and use it. But uh, I'm going to give the, the keyboard and mouse the four chairs. All right. All right, well, that's uh, three chairs for control. And to put a bow on it. Ooh, um, it's a subjective did, category. Did you have fun, then? Oh, uh, yeah. Yeah, this is kind of a mixed bag, man, because for this game, uh, The Escapist 2 falls into the if-I-had-more-time category of business. It's a hipster pixel top-down open world-ish in a closed environment. Kind of unique, a little bit different there. It has crafting, so meh, boo, don't like that, fuck crafting. Uh, it's kind of fetch questy, you know, initially. 100% on that. Uh, not my favorite thing, but it's something to do. It's like a top-down Skyrim, just a big-ass sound box, just kind of shrunk down. Then again, you know, it has the one thing that I genuinely enjoy in any type of video game, and that's the ability to have multiple ways to solve the same problem, the same puzzle. And this, this Escapist 2 absolutely delivers that. So what I got to say is I'll give it a Strider, with the two, but I'm going to throw an Astrid, an Astro on it, because this Escapist 2 is 100% desert, stuck on a desert island type game. I could have a lot of fun with this, and it does boil down to if you have the time and mix that in with a really good setback experience, you'd probably have three, but I would have to have that set time to put into it because it is something that is quite involved. Oh yeah, absolutely. Uh, I thought for sure that it's going to be one of those things where I can like go and bust out a couple levels. Uh, but no, every level takes it in excess of a couple hours because you got to go gather all the materials. You got to like make copies of guards keys and like figure out what the actual escape routes actually are. They have some neat ones too that are only available via multiplayer, which is kind of neat because you had some additional variety. Hey, we want to try this kind of prison break. It's pretty neat. You can also, it also does the Borderlands thing where you can just join games in progress. But really, my experience playing with playing with it for like two hours is it's it's just okay. Like mm -hmm. at, at at its core, I think it's an interesting challenge. Tr 
given given literally nothing, go talk to people, curry favors, gather all the resources required to break out of prison. What? Here's a, here's something I forgot to like put in the notes to ask both of you. If this mm-hmm. entire game was like say triple A done not first person or third person you you couldn't pull me out of this if you were the king of england it's something about just being a top down pixel game cuz i mean mm, everything's maybe. there cuz when you first look at it you're like this couldn't be very deep it's got a lot a lot of business a lot of shit going on i think i just wanted to ask I, you guys that honestly i think i think if I it were uh, doing doing like first person or whatever, unless you did like some Metal Gear Solid Soliton radar, a lot of the stealth aspects sort of require you to have that top down view because you need to know to like get to the right place when there are people nearby. Well, think Hitman. Uh, which I guess would make it a lot more challenging and a lot more uh, of an authentic prison break scenario. Mm-hmm. As, especially like after you pick fights, people just like drag you to the infirmary and then you just get up. I, and like also considering there are missions where you basically just have to go shiva motherfucker. <laughs> um, or soap them. Yeah, yeah, pretty, pretty much. I, I, I used the, screw, I was using the screwdriver just because it's like shank, shank, bitch. Um, but yeah, no. Show title. <laughs> exactly, it's shank, shank, bitch. Uh, but like a lot of, uh, there's a lot of grinding involved because you gotta like, you, you gotta, you gotta show up to the places where they expect you to be, and once they confirm that you're there, you can go fuck off and do whatever you want. But you gotta kind of plan it out so that you can always show up and go do the thing, other thing you want to do, which is problematic when you're trying to find resources. Like you, you can, you can do the crafty bits to like prison ghetto engineer tools that you need to escape. And a a lot of that is just like finding out who actually has what, which is where a lot of your time is going to be spent. Um, like going through the crafting tree and like bringing up your stats so that you can actually build the stuff. Mm -hmm. It's kind of grindy and not in the way that, really speaks to me as a player like as like i said at its core it's an interesting challenge and maybe maybe if we played some multiplayer it'd be a lot more fun because then you could stratemergize and do some of the more advanced um advanced stuff but it's it, at the end of the day it's a fuck around simulator and it's not really doing much for me it's competently done it's not a bad game it's i just can't find it all that fun we'll give it two cheers yeah i would agree with uh jordan that uh uh, multiplayer would probably make this more fun. Uh, now, I was going to give it one chair for the fun, but I figured out something that wasn't documented anywhere that I could find, and that is when you go on a quest uh, or you accept a quest from one of the other inmates, you don't necessarily get the quest item, even if the dialogue makes it seem like he's handing it to you right then and there. Uh, a lot of times... It'll be like, hey, here, take this paper clip. And you're like, "Uh, inventory, uh, there's no paper clip in my inventory. You actually have to go and find the... It's like, hi, I see you're trying to shank a bitch. Uh, Would you like assistance with that? Like, (laughs) shut up, Clippy. (laughs) Yeah. Well, it's interesting that you bring that up, too. um, Because, like, there was was one mission where it's like, uh, stop this guy from painting a mural. And I thought, okay, the easiest way to do it is to, the way I solve all my problems, with violence. Mm-hmm. And so I beat the shit out of him. And the quest didn't complete. And then, like, a day later, it just randomly finished. I'm like, what? Because I guess he just, like, didn't take the job that week. And it, it, it's kind of... I, I don't know. Maybe, ask you can agree or disagree with me. It's kind of obtuse sometimes what exactly you need to do unless it's, like, go there and kill this person. Yeah, a lot... Uh- that's what I was trying to get at is some of the stuff is just obtuse. Um, I spent a, an hour figuring out that I had to go to the little clue piece icon on the map just to get the, the little piece that I needed that it seemed like he was going to hand it to me. Um, but I'll still give it uh, two chairs for the fun. It, it might have gotten more if uh, if we'd gotten around to the multiplayer. Mm-hmm. All right, well, that's two chairs with an asteroid for the uh, for the fun segment. We tally all that nonsense up, and uh, we get oh, sh- shock and awe, shock and awe. The escapists to gets a uh, gets a three chairs. So that's uh, mm-hmm. that's uh, check it out. Uh, do you guys got any final parting words about uh, this game? Mm, let me check something right quick. Uh, 
All right, what I was checking was the price on Brad. Nineteen ninety nine. Is it worth that? If this is your jam, baby, yes. If if you're just prison curious, go commit a minor felony and just play the home game. So save yourself that twenty quid. You're gonna need it, you know, when you call Saul. <laughs> yeah, just get 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 house arrested. Mm-hmm. I just get yeah. yeah they they uh they one 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 home security bracer didn't do it so they got to give me two yeah I I don't know for ni- nineteen bucks yeah definitely if you're gonna be like in a place without internet for a while then this will probably be worth it because it will at least keep you busy um but I can't give it a solid recommend for that price and it goes on sale and it goes in humble bundles um enough that you could probably get it for a reasonable amount of money but the asking price is just a little high ask. Yeah, I, I would say it's earned its three chairs, but only only if you if it's really up your alley. So, all right, seems legit. Coming up next, uh, I'm melting. I'm melting. What a world! What a world! Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, it's that time. Time to talk back to us. That's right. We've been screaming in your direction, all up in your face organs, letting you know what we think about stuff, sharing opinions. And I'm sure we got plenty of stuff wrong or things you might just just disagree with a little bit. And hey, this is an Internet show, so you can screech back in hours. Uh, just head over to LinuxGameCast.com, contact button. And uh, if you're a developer, you know, you're thinking about sending some keys, do some fuck mothering math. Send three. You can do it. You're clever. Select the correct topic, be it this show, that show we do on Wednesdays, um, relationship advice, anything you want, Jordan will be happy to deliver that, and it is just as hot and sexy as it sounds, but uh, coming up first, uh, what, what do we got, J-Baby? We, 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 got, we got some uh, things from Tenebris Edge. And he's talking about uh, Meltdown. He says, with Haswell and older Intel CPUs taking a massive performance in with uh, Meltdown and Spectre attack patches, I'm jumping ship. Ryzen, Threadripper, and R357 is confusing. 1070, want a game? Seriously? Or suggestion? So, um, it's not that confusing it, because real- AMD literally just stole the Intel product line identifiers. R3 is the that. entry level, R5 is the mid range, R7 is like the topo shit. Um, I don't know, man. Is, I mean, if you're trying to find the ever elusive R three five seven, that could be a little confusing. No, it's it's what it's what happens when you like do the Sega Tower of Power, where you stick like an R five on an R seven on an R. Ah, ah, this involves tape. Yeah. Yes, <laughs> or super glue, or solder. Um, but yeah, uh, and yeah, Thre- Threadripper is just if you want insanely high core counts. It's not going to do you much for gaming these days because everything's still single threaded as shit. Uh, and if you're getting a 1070, yeah, go. 1070 is a great card. Buy it. Sonic? Uh, I would say an R5. R5? Get an R5. You're not going to yeah. spout the virtues of um, using a uh, Xeon to game? No. No? No. All right. Uh, well, that makes perfect sense. Yeah, uh, you can definitely get away with an R5. Uh, wouldn't complain about that. You might get lucky. You might get a uh, eight core part because Intel, not Intel, AMD has definitely seeded those out there accidentally, uh, which is total bullshit. That's marketing. Silicon lottery. Right. I have the, uh, I'm very happy with the 1700. I call it a short bus, but we've shown that you can take a 1700 with a stock heat sink, uh, the Wraith or whatever it's called, uh, and Chris clock that thing. I'm running it currently at 3.6 gigajoules. No problem playing all the games I want at 1080p at least. So, yeah, man, that's the thing. It's brilliant. Okay, up next. I couldn't find the link because it's somewhere and not showing <laughs> up in Hangouts. You want to read this off? All right, fine. Jordan is really prepared this night. Um, Hello, Jordan. Directed towards him. My wife seems to be embarking on a career as a Linux podcast journalist. I'm sure you know that there's nothing more despised in this cruel world. I fear her newfound fame and fortune may lead her to leave me for a large penguin. 
I've even seen her sneaking out to the Git pub. What should I do? Question mark. Uh, this is from worried underscore husband. Well, you know, it's, it's, um, it's a really, really crucial thing mm-hmm. when, when your, your wife decides to get, enter the sordid slime filled world of Linux podcasting. The CD I would underbelly? suggest like actually installing Linux on yourself. And you can do that by finding like a flash drive, putting like an Ubuntu live CD on it and just jamming it into your temple repeatedly until Linux is installed on your brain. There's going to be some driver issues. Um, things may not work properly because that's still, that's still in development, but uh, highly recommend it. Atomic. Yeah. Um, the, uh, the uh, drivers for the, uh, for the brain are very much alpha still. Is that all you got? So, so, says says yeah. the arch user. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Um, I'm going to give you some classic time honored advice. It's simply uh, how, how does it go? The sage words of wisdom: Run, bro, run. I think that's it. Because on that bombshell, let's cue the music. You can always find us around 9:30 Eastern Standard Moon Time. That is GMT minus five currently right now. If you want to scream at me at Vince Stone on the Twitters, type in Vince Stone on the Googles. I'll get back to you. I'll at least read it. I'll make you that promise. Sounds good. I'm Jordan Smung. You can find me trying to install Linux on various body parts. Uh, also collecting my $3,000 from the Atomic Ass at the Burning Pool on Twitter. Plus Jordan Smung on Google Plus. I'm going to break your fucking legs. Tell them where you can find them. Uh, you can find me on Twitter. Having missed, uh, skipped the uh, Twitter purge, uh, skimping out on my three thousand dollar debt to Jordan at the Atomic House. All right, ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, we didn't learn anything. Just that body parts are Linux compatible for the two hundred and eighty second time. I think we should uh, cue the credits. Yeah. No, maybe. Yeah. All right. I, I saw some. Maybe. I saw some tweet a while ago. It was like, you can't write chairs. I'm like, oh, sweetie, please. Mm. We write with chairs. <laughs> chairs are a very essential and or crucial ingredient. We get our beautiful. Look at that. For, There's for the Alice atomic gas. Right oh shit! How meta. Yeah. Yeah. Dashes. Imprisoning me. Dot dot dot. <laughs> Dash, look, dash, look, dash. look at all these lovely people who just like toss money at us. Hey man, I, I, God, they're rubes. Oh man, you say that. What's wrong with all of them? Who's more the rubes that we do four streams? Come on, we're about to add a fifth. Ugh. Oh yeah, it's gonna get all that Barry. And of course, Frank's fuck wall for everyone who's picked us up. Something off our wish zone. Bradley, Jill, and Steve, Maddie, Erod, Mikhail. And- John, Mr. Ed, Linux, Nero, Clocks, Steve-O, Admiral JT, Trugs, Mir, even Mir, Frenchie, for that evil controller in my BMW, Ryan M, and J, not to be confused the with ever- J-Man. It, it, he's very mysterious, that J. We love you. Five dudes. <laughs>